Yeah, hey everyone, this is Dwayne with Dwayne's Diagnostics and Mobile Auto Repair. And um, I am actually doing a video today about a mistake I made uh, a couple months ago or so while working on this trailer uh, diagnosing some uh, wiring problems it had with the trailer lights. And um, I was going to do a video on it at the time that it happened but I was uh, kind of a new YouTube channel and uh, I wasn't really sure if I wanted to uh, make a video about it and uh, kind of maybe get trolled or uh, get hated on for uh, showing my mistake but um, I figured this uh, video might actually help someone out there uh, maybe not have the same mistake or make the same mistake I made. It's actually a, uh, a pretty common mistake uh, for any mechanics or diagnostic guys that uh, do electrical testing and use uh, any type of meters, multimeters that uh, like these that, that measure uh, DC amps. It's actually a uh, pretty common mistake that happens uh, for guys that use these type of meters. And uh, it wasn't actually a bad mistake uh, or mistake that caused any kind of damage to uh, any vehicle or to this uh, trailer. Um, it, it was just a, a uh, mistake I made kind of in my, my testing process. And uh, it happens all the time. Um, I've actually seen, uh, heard other automotive instructors talk about um, how they uh, try to prevent this problem and uh, different ways that they teach their students, different things they teach their students and apprentices to uh, prevent this problem from happening. But uh, it's a pretty common problem. And... Uh, The problem that happened actually is uh, I was going to uh, test the uh, voltage on some of this trailer light wiring and uh, using this meter and um, hooked up this meter to test the voltage and I uh, actually didn't realize it but my red test lead here was actually uh, still in this DC 10 amp port when I hooked it up to the wires because uh, it had been in that port uh, from a previous vehicle that I was testing I, I believe a battery draw on and uh, when I hooked up the leads to this trailer wiring I wasn't paying attention and uh, to where these uh, leads what ports these leads were hooked up into and uh so this red one was hooked up into this DC 10 amp port and um, as soon as I hooked up the wires pretty much uh, it fried this meter and uh, melted this wiring here on this red test lead. You can see it's just all fried. And I can actually take this meter apart and show you. You can see it's all melted in these ports here. Right there, right there. Some in this circuit board. But um, it, that is actually a uh, actually a pretty common problem that happens uh, when you're uh, using a meter like this, that where you got to switch the test leads from the DC port back to the voltage port a lot of guys will just grab their meter and not pay attention like I did to where the leads are hooked up and uh, you, you're going to test voltage but <clears throat> like I had I still had the, the red lead in in the amp port so uh, it was basically just drawing battery amps through the leads through my meter and fried the meter so uh figured I'd do a little video on this to uh, 
maybe uh, prevent someone else out there from having this problem or uh, make guys or people out there aware uh, that this problem can happen. Um, a lot of meter, from what I've heard, uh, have a built-in fuse on this 10 amp circuit. A fuse that will blow if, if, if you uh, hook it up wrong like this. But um, this meter actually does not have a uh, fuse on that circuit. And it says it right here, it's unfused. Which, um, I'm sure I've read that before, and but uh, I just, I, I didn't think of it at the time or wasn't aware of it. You know, I've been using this meter, honestly, for, I've had this meter for probably at least 15 years. And um, have never hooked it up wrong like that, so never had this problem before. And uh, I'm sure I've read that it was unfused on there before, but uh, just, you know, never thought of it because I've never had that problem but uh in this case since this meter is unfused it just fried the meter instead of blowing a fuse on other meters it just has a fuse in there where if you hook it up wrong it, it will just blow the fuse and then you can just replace the fuse but it won't damage the meter but in this case uh this meter is unfused so uh it ended up frying the meter and um, I got another meter here which is about the same age and pretty similar and uh, <coughs> I believe it is unfused also there is a fuse uh, inside this one there is a fuse uh, right here which um, you probably won't be able to see it but it's a 315 milliamp fuse which is for the uh, measuring the lower amps on uh, this function here and this function here <coughs> and uh <coughs> excuse me this meter also has a uh, lower amp fuse which you can read right there replace only with 200 milliamp 250 volt fuse so it looks like the 10 amp circuit on this meter also is not is unfused not protected by a fuse But from what I've heard, a lot of a lot of meters do have a fuse that protects them. So uh, I don't know. It just happened that I have these these two meters that are not fuse protected on that 10 amp circuit. So um, figured I'd just do a video on that uh, for anyone uh, out there unaware of this problem or that uses these type of meters. Um, you can. You can uh, fry the meter if, if you hook it up with it still in the uh, DC amp port when you're going to measure voltage. And um, honestly, it was kind of disappointing to me because I've had this meter a long time and this is actually one of my kind of go-to meters. I, I, I use this meter a lot or did use it a lot. Uh, it's a it's a cheap meter. I think I got it for like 28 bucks at uh, Walmart like about 15 years ago or so But uh has actually been a pretty decent meter uh, I use it a lot uh, Or did use it a lot and uh Actually liked it quite a bit um, It has all kinds of functions on it. It has the little uh, kickstand on it right here which uh, <coughs> Is pretty handy has a pretty big uh, display so uh, it's pretty easy to see the numbers on it it is uh, auto ranging which uh, honestly I don't like the uh, auto ranging feature but uh, maybe some people do but uh, a lot of what I use it for is just uh, checking voltages and um, checking uh, millivolts uh, 
for voltage drop and uh, milliamps for uh, any kind of battery draw it seems uh, to be uh, pretty accurate for those so that's uh, kind of the main things that I like to use it for was uh, checking uh, voltage drop and, and uh, checking battery drains so uh, it's kind of disappointing that I accidentally fried it but you know at least it wasn't uh, too much of a loss and uh, didn't didn't uh, hurt this trailer or uh, damage a vehicle or anything um, I'm just basically out uh, 28 bucks you know but I've had this meter for at least about 15 years <coughs> and uh you know I haven't been to Walmart to look and see if they still carry these or sell these but uh honestly if they if they did I would I would buy another one of these in a minute because uh, I just like this meter uh, it seemed to be a pretty good, pretty accurate meter. But, um, yeah, I figured I'd just do a little video on that. Uh, you know, I kind of didn't want to do it at first, and I uh, thought it might get me some hate and uh, not be good for my channel, but I uh, figured it might also help someone, make someone else out there... Uh, aware of this problem and that you can fry your meter if you hook it up wrong and uh you know just trying to be be honest and uh show you know that uh even a guy like me uh i'm human too i do make mistakes you know everybody does um nobody's perfect you know even though uh most people a lot of people won't admit to their mistakes or uh are gonna show it on their youtube channel or uh you know a lot of mechanics or techs or shops out there they're not going to admit to their mistakes but uh you know this this is a pretty common mistake that happens to a lot of guys and uh not just me and uh one of the ways that i heard from a uh <coughs> an automotive instructor to uh prevent this problem is um to just always pull your lead out of this port and put it back into the volts port after you're done testing making any kind of amp measurement just automatically pull your lead out of here when you're done and put it back into the volts port which uh, seems like a very good idea uh, and something I'll I'll probably start practicing if I remember but also another uh, thing that he uh, required his students to do is uh, hook up an inline fuse into their uh, red test lead. Hook up an inline fuse like this. I got this inline fuse here, if I can get it open. There's a 10 amp fuse in there. And you could just rig this up to your red test lead, solder it, or, uh, you know, connect connect it any any way you want to connect it to your red test lead and then that way your meter would always be protected by a fuse so uh that's a good that would that's a good way to uh protect your meter and uh you know then if you do accidentally hook it up wrong you'll just blow this fuse and not fry your meter and then you can uh just replace that fuse and uh the problem will be solved so uh i thought that was a couple good uh suggestions and ideas he had and uh ideas that he implements with his students and apprentices that he works with so um that's a couple ideas uh for anyone out there uh to prevent you from having this same problem or and uh maybe having to buy a new meter or uh having to order uh new fuses for whatever meter you might be using but uh anyway just figured i'd do a video on this and uh hopefully someone out there liked it and uh possibly learned something and um i will talk to you on the next one